Greetings AP Calculus AP students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We are finally on our last video example from topic 1.6 using algebra to determine limits. And about the one kind of function that we have yet to encounter is our ever so popular piecewise function. So let's take a look at our example number 10 here. We're going to find the limit of f of x as x approaches 2, where f of x is defined as this piecewise. If you have a bit of an aversion to piecewise functions, I would say that we want to get over it very quickly because all throughout calculus you're going to confront these from time to time and you want to be able to apply the new calculus concepts to them and you want to be comfortable with them in doing so. So they're not so bad, so don't be afraid of them. Now, what we're going to always have to do with a piecewise function, because of the fact that the limit is wanting, uh, we're wanting to find the limit rather as x approaches 2, it seems that the most common kinds of questions are going to reveal the, the, the limit value, the limiting value of x as approaching the number where the rule of your piecewise function changes. So in this case, it's 2. And so all that simply says is that you would find the limit of your function f of x as x approaches 2 from the left, and you would find the limit of your function f of x as x approaches 2 from the right. Now, what I'm going to do here specifically is fill in the f of x with the specific version of the piecewise function. And you got to be very careful because sometimes problems will kind of trick you like in this one. If we let x approach 2 from the left, would we be dealing with the top piece or the bottom piece? Well, if you answered the bottom, you are correct. Because x being less than 2 is the same thing as being able to approach 2 from the left. Likewise, if we're going to let x approach 2 from the right, that's going to focus on that top piece, 3x squared minus 1 in this case. Now, at this point, what we have is this really wonderful continuous pair of functions, which just simply means that we are allowed to directly substitute the value 2, doesn't matter if it's approaching left or right, and we can come up with an answer of 12 for our left-handed limit. For our right side limit, 2 squared is going to be 4, and then by the time we resolve that arithmetic, we get 11. Now, what does this all mean? Well, because those two answers are not the same, we can then make the declaration that our limit as x approaches 2 of our overall function f of x does not exist. And I'd like to give you a little bit of visual kind of reinforcement here, as I've been doing with a lot of the limit uh, problems that we've been studying. So if I were to go, let's go to the TI Inspire, first of all. And I'm going to have us insert a, um, a piecewise function template, which I can do so from this menu option here. And first of all, oops, probably would be nice to bring up a graph entry line. Now let's grab that piecewise function template. And if I just type our problem exactly as it appears on, on the page, we get something that looks like this. Um, let's see, I might want to move or, yeah, scooch this over just a little bit here so that we can see some of these menu buttons. If I want to change or, or access the uh, inequalities, it's second equal. And I believe it's option, uh, what, the less than or the greater than or equal to would be the first option in the second row there. And then I'll go down to this bottom one, 5x plus 2 it was, x in less than, control equal, 2. And then boom, there is my function. And to save you the agony of having to count the lines and whatnot, what we can see here is that... Uh, 11 would have been the answer to the right-hand limit, which is right there. 12 is the answer to the left-hand limit, and you can see that these do not meet up. Now, just real quickly, if you are a TI-84 user, just to give you uh, folks a, a little bit of insight here as well, you can do the same thing to enter a piecewise function into a TI-84, as long as you have one of the newer models. You hit the math button, and you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom here, and it's option B, piecewise, under the math tab. That's going to bring up uh, that option. Now, first of all, you got to go into your y equal menu, of course, and then go to where we had just mentioned. 
piecewise, and you'll see that you can change the number of pieces. I think the maximum is going to be five, but in this case, we only need two pieces. We'll hit OK here, and then it, for, for the most part, it's going to look exactly like the TI Inspires interface. The one difference is in order to get your inequalities, you're going to go into a button called Test, which is going to be second math, and then you can get your inequalities there. So to finish this up, we have our greater than or equal to two. Jump down to the second line. I think we're typing in five x plus two, and x is less than two. So second math less than two. And you're essentially going to see the same graph uh, when you hit graph. Now you want to make sure that your window is set appropriately. And I tell you what, this one can be a bit tricky because um, I, I do have them typed in correctly, but it doesn't look like there's that much of a break there. So you might have to find yourself doing some zoom. Uh, we could zoom box, we could zoom in. Zoom box sometimes is one of my favorite ways to zoom. So I can just basically position the cursor maybe upper left of that uh, that uh, area on the graph. I think I want to hit enter at this point, and then I can position the cursor lower and to the right just to kind of form a box. Hopefully I've got that correct, and then you can see the break once this is zoomed in a little bit, and you can even kind of see from the cursor settings that one of the values is going to have a Y uh, result of 11. If I can get it there. <laughs> and then the one that's going to be up here, of course, is going to be 12. So hopefully that helps out a little bit, and we will see you at the next video.